Good morning, Stern Village. Happy Sunday. I hope that all of you are well and uh, safe in the world. All is well in my world. Uh, I'm at home recording uh, the sermon this week. I did record the sermon this morning at the church, and um, while I was doing yard work today, I started second-guessing the sermon and felt that it needed tweaking. I will probably regret re-recording the sermon. <laughs> However, here we are. So, welcome to my dining room. Um, as in weeks past, um, I'm going to follow the same format, invitation to worship, um, collect scripture, and then uh, the reflection. Uh, the dogs are loose in the house, so hopefully they will uh, behave for the next 15 minutes. Um, so here we go. Holy One, out of our ordinary and everyday lives, we return to this place and this time. And so, here and now, open our eyes, our hearts, our minds. Take the chaos of the world that has found its way into our hearts. Speak your word and give order and form and new creation. Take the failures and the defeats, the guilt and the shame that bind our spirits. Speak your word and set us free. And in freedom, may we speak love and mercy and grace to those who are waiting, who are longing, who are hoping for a sign that they do not travel alone in this life. In Christ we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Prepare us, O God, to hear your word through the scripture of this day. Confront us with your claim upon our life. Clarify the choices we must make if our lives are to have meaning and purpose. Help us to respond to the one who came as the bread of life, so that we may know life at its fullest and at its very best. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from John, chapter 17, verses 6 through 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy God, protect them in your name, that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name, that you have given me. I guarded them. And not one of them was lost except the one who, one destined to be lost, so that the scripture could be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I, I do ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. <laughs> that was the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is what happens when I return to the lectionary. Gospel of John. So... I've recently been thinking a lot about threshold moments in, in life. 
<clears throat> moments that forever change how we live, how we see, and how we assess and value our lives. I believe that we can all agree that we are living in a threshold moment today with COVID-19. And the reality of the pandemic calls into question our priorities and values, the ways we live and relate to one another, how we invest our time and our energy. Underscoring the questions, I believe, what really matters in life? And does our life, your life, and my life make a difference? There is no one right answer to any of those questions. The truth is, we carry and ask those questions throughout our lives. They are lived questions, pointing to an ongoing process of, of clarity and meaning and, and becoming. All of which leads me to wonder if that's what's also happening in today's gospel with Jesus. Today's gospel lesson is a prayer. What I read moments ago was a prayer. Yet it is part of a larger monologue known as the Farewell Discourse, spoken during the night of the Last Supper. After washing the feet of the disciples, Jesus begins speaking of his departure, his death. He talks a lot, a lot four chapters and 117 verses of talking. It's a lot. He talks about his life, his work, he talks about God, and what it will be like for the disciples on the other side of, of his death. And throughout the monologue, all 117 verses, we are given a rare glimpse into Jesus' internal life. More specifically, we are given an insight into how he is navigating this particular threshold moment in his own life. We are told Jesus was troubled in spirit. That's not surprising. When you consider earlier in the monologue, Jesus declares that one of his disciples will betray him. And the other disciples will eventually abandon him in his time of, of need. Further, there are threads throughout the monologue of, of Jesus questioning the impact of, of his ministry. For instance, when Philip asked the question, Lord, show us God and we will be satisfied. Jesus replies, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Which leads me to wonder if Jesus is questioning what he's accomplished in his ministry, in his life. Has his life made a difference? Has he failed in showing these disciples the true nature of God? When Jesus tells the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, I'm struck by the word if. Is he uncertain of the disciples' love? I don't know. But I do understand the uncertainty of, of not being loved by others. Jesus is, however, certain about the world, stating that the world hated him. All of that is the context leading into today's prayer. And this prayer is not simple. It's not, dear God, please. It's rambling and it's long. It's confusing and honestly, it's hard to understand. It is so hard to understand. He does ask God for three things. Um, that God would protect the disciples so that they may be one as Jesus and God are one. That God would protect them from the evil one and that God would sanctify them in, in truth. The rest of the prayer is, is Jesus saying what God has, has done what the disciples have done and what the world has done. It's certainly not an elegant prayer. It's not a cohesive prayer. It's constantly shifting in different directions, folding in on itself, scattered and disjointed. 
At one point, he's making statements. At another point, he's asking questions, underscoring, I believe, his desire to make sense of his life. He's wrestling with self for clarity and meaning. And throughout the prayer, there is this thread of, of grief and uncertainty. The truth is, Jesus' prayer isn't so different from the way I've prayed many times in my life. And I suspect that's true for you as well. You see, threshold moments frame the human condition and our struggle to be authentic and whole. And Jesus, in today's lesson, has come to a threshold moment in his life. And more often than not, threshold moments are places of confusion, of uncertainty, of pleading, and of prayer. And in this regard, in this instance, we are reminded that Jesus isn't so different from you and me as we often think or want him to be. In fact, we see the humanness of Jesus standing in solidarity with us and our humanity. Today, we see the human Jesus working out his life and wrestling with questions of identity and purpose and meaning. And who among us doesn't know what that's like? We all do. We all struggle to work out our life and answer the questions, what really matters in life? And does our life, your life, in my life make a difference. We all come to threshold moments in life. Sometimes it might be an illness, a death, a pandemic, the loss of a job, a shattered dream. Yet it might also be a marriage, the birth of a child, a new puppy, an unexpected opportunity. In many ways, our lives are a series of threshold moments that challenge us and change us to become more authentic in our living and in our loving. I don't have any easy answers to offer you on how best to navigate the threshold moments in your life. Each threshold is unique in many ways to the individual. But I'll tell you this, I am struck by what Jesus doesn't do in today's lesson when he encounters his threshold moment. He doesn't isolate or close in on himself. He doesn't get angry and resentful. He doesn't resist or fight back. He doesn't run away or try to escape. He doesn't complain about or deny the reality of what is happening in his life. Instead, he faces his life. He embraces his humanity and his vulnerability. He feels what he feels. He grieves, he weeps, he renders his heart. He prays. So perhaps in this terrain of COVID-19, this threshold moment of our lives, we will take a cue from Jesus. Perhaps we will permit him to inspire and comfort us as we continue on this journey. Thanks be to God. Amen. I give thanks to God for all of you. And I pray that you will bear witness to the love of God in this world so that those to whom love is a stranger, that they will find in you a generous and loving friend. In the name of Christ Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. Until next week, stoners, um, uh, I love you. I hope that you remain safe and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.